So in the previous video, we took a look at some basic concepts, which include what is an acid, what is a base, and in this video, we're actually going to focus on point number three, which is going to be looking at pH and pKa. And by comparing pH to pKa, we can determine when given an acid or a base, if that acid or that base is primarily going to be ionized or unionized. And as we saw in the last video, we looked at, for example, an acid in its unionized form. We would call it an unionized acid, such as this carboxylic acid. And we saw how a base can remove that proton, turning the unionized acid into a very clearly ionized base. Why is it ionized? Because it has that negative charge. And of course, we can't go from acid to acid or base to base. Um, by definition, when an acid loses its proton, it becomes a base which is then capable of accepting a proton. And that's why we have the reversible arrows there. Then we looked at the same thing with a base. So we said, okay, a base is high in electron density and a base is a proton acceptor. It's gonna pick up a proton and it's going to lead to this Ia. So the unionized base is going to turn into the ionized acid. So at this point, you should be comfortable with assigning UA, IA, and UB, IB uh, to different compounds. And now we're going to move on to this point right here, which is pH and pKa. So before we get to that, let's quickly look at four functional groups that you should memorize. So the first one is a carboxylic acid, which looks like this. And of course, you're going to see these functional groups as part of much larger molecules. So it might take some practice to begin with to be able to see these molecules and right away know what functional groups are present. So a carboxylic acid is acidic. Right? It even has it in the name. And its pKa is 1 to 5. So that's something to memorize. And now a slightly less acidic acid when compared to carboxylic acid is this phenyl. Now this phenyl, as you can see, is directly attached to an aromatic ring. So again, pay attention to whether it's directly attached or not. So what do I mean by directly attached? Well, we have this aromatic ring right here, and it's directly attached to this oxygen, or this OH group, right? So in other words, if I drew out a phenyl, or if I drew out an aromatic ring, excuse me, and then a few carbons away, I put on an OH, that is not a phenyl, okay? So a phenyl, you have to have that aromatic ring directly attached, like we see here on the left. And the pKa of this phenyl, which is also an acidic functional group, is 8 to 10. Now, looking at an aromatic amine, an aromatic amine is a base and so is an aliphatic amine. So how do I know if something is aromatic or aliphatic? So let's start with aromatic. Well, an aromatic amine is clearly going to have an aromatic ring in it. So if I draw out a benzene ring, similar to what we did with the phenyl group above, and I put in an amine group here, then this is an aromatic amine. Because looking at this functional group, I see that I have an amine and directly attached to that nitrogen, I have an aromatic ring. So again, it has to be directly attached. So this aromatic amine is in fact a base. So it's basic and its pKa is one to five. Now this base is not as strong as an aliphatic amine. 
So an aliphatic amine is not going to have that aromaticity. So an aliphatic amine is just going to look like this. For example, a carbon, a carbon hydrogen chain here, or a hydrocarbon attached to a nitrogen, or an amine group. Or I could have maybe a ring that does, not, that does not have aromaticity attached to a nitrogen. Right, so both of these would be examples of aliphatic amines. And like I said, aliphatic amines are basic and they're more basic than aromatic amines. The pKa there, as we see in this table, is 8 to 10. A funny way to remember this is aliphatic, I see fat. So I think, oh, an aliphatic amine is fat. And so its pKa is going to be 8 to 10. Or in other words, it's a pKa that is higher than the aromatic amine. So I just remember, oh, aliphatic is the fat amine, so it has the higher pKa. So the most acidic functional group out of these four is going to be this carboxylic acid with a pKa of 1 to 5, because the lower the pKa, the more acidic it is. And then conversely, looking comparing our two bases, the aromatic amine and the aliphatic amine, the aliphatic amine is more basic. Why is it more basic? Well, because its pKa is higher. And so that is also important to be able to compare the two. All right, so now I want to move on to an important concept, which is how do we determine if something is acidic or basic? And what I mean by that is looking at your starting molecule, you first have to determine, okay, is this a unionized acid or is it an unionized base? What am I starting with? So that's an important thing that you want to keep in mind. And so looking at this top image here, this top molecule, well, I see a COOH group, and if I expand that out, that's just a carboxylic acid, right? So when you see that COOH, you know that that's your carboxylic acid. We already know that the pKa of a carboxylic acid is 1 to 5. So I see that and I think, okay, pKa is 1 to 5. And on the left, we, we're starting off with the unionized acidic form. So why is it a UA? It's because we see the COOH, and we know, based on this last table, that these top two functional groups are acidic. So I know that this carboxylic acid and this phenyl is acidic, whereas this aromatic amine and this aliphatic amine are basic. These are not the only ones you need to know. There's other functional groups that you need to learn as acidic or basic, but these are the four that you need to know along with their pKa's. So here we see COOH. I see that and I think, okay, so that's acidic for sure. And in one of your lecture slides, you see that an ether, which is over here on the left, this O oxygen R group is neutral. So I actually don't really have to worry about that too much, right? So I'm going to focus on this acid, and I know it's pKa. And I know that if I remove this proton in, the, in a basic environment, then I'm going to get the ionized form. Why is it ionized? Because of that negative charge right there. It has a charge. Nothing happens to the ether because it was neutral to begin with, so that's kind of just irrelevant. And so that's how I go from the UA form to the IB form. Similarly, uh, looking at this bottom example, I see what functional group? Well, right off the bat, I see another acidic functional group. And specifically, I see a phenyl group that we discussed on the previous page. And so this is a phenyl group. And I see that, and I think, OK, pKa is 8 to 10. 
just like it's written on here, eight to 10. And then same analysis, I can do the same analysis. I see, okay, well, on the left, why is it a UA? It's a UA because for sure it's an A, for sure it's an acid, because it's one of my acidic functional groups that we discussed, and it's unionized because there's no charge. Now I go to the right-hand side and I see, okay, I have a charge, so I've got to put an I down, it's ionized. And I know it's basic because look where it came from. It came from a molecule of phenyl that lost its proton, that donated its proton, so it's a proton donor. And once, by definition, once that proton is lost, we have that basic form.